for you. God embraces you with divine mercy. God forgives you in Christ's name. And God revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen.
of the place Masa and Meribah, because the Israelites affirmed in the presence of the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading this morning is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. A reading from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. But while we were so weak at the right time Christ died for the ungodly, and he rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, person though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us and that we were so sinners to Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. But more than that, we can boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Said to the people, 
I must see a man who has told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat? My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to complete his work. Do you not say, four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around, and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages, and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you may and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you have said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Thank you to my friends for joining us in telling the story of reading this longer um, passage, which we'll have the next handful of weeks. Wondered if any of uh, our young folks want to spend a few moments together. We can now, if you'd like. I'm going to see Wilson, hello. She's lying here, or she can, uh, she's in the nursery. Okay. All right. Well, I was going to use Brian uh, as an illustration, but I'll do that another time. How are you guys? Good. I like your pirate shirt. And your, and your motorcycle. Oh, you know what? Freddie has one of these. Man, that goes on forever. How do you do it? Go forwards like this, and then let it go. Oh, stop! We're just gonna do that for a second. Dude, you know what? I just got a cool idea. Ready? Double and Wilson. Are you cheating to the pants? Look at that. Hey, there's Ryan. All right. Check this out. Here, let me see it one more time. Well, what if we? Okay, I have a cool idea. All right. One of these days. We'll tell, we'll, we'll tell the gospel story with Legos, right? Because how cool is that? Like, Jesus, Jesus left and went to a village in Samaria called Samaria. <laughs> right? And he crashed near a well. And he was thirsty. And give it a go, Jerry. Look, oh, no! I believe it. You can do it. You can do it. Thirsty quicker, don't you? And then you drink 
water. Water quenches your thirst and helps you live. What else do you know about water? It's good for you. It is good for you. Is water dry? No, water is wet. Can you feel wet water? You can feel, you can feel the wetness of water, can you? Right? You can feel water. Right? There's, a, there's a real feeling, there's a texture to it. There's a cool, this, this is a cooling water, right? Yeah. It is cold. So, so Jesus uses water to teach us things, to help us see something different. And um, why I wanted to remind us is because Ryan is getting ready to, to be baptized on Palm and Passion Sunday this year. In just a few weeks, we're going to start with a baptism of young Ryan. And so water is something that we use in the church uh, with God's Word that shows us the truth of God's forgiveness and God's love. Of God's forgiveness and God's love. So let's, yep, you can take one last dip in the water and then come on back up here. Come on, we're going to bring Ryan on up, okay? And then we're going to, uh, we're going to think about today, as we go, okay? We're going to think about God's forgiveness and God's love, okay? Forgiveness and God's love. And we'll talk more about that as these weeks unfold as we get ready for Ryan's baptism. All right. Let's uh, have a word of prayer together. So you can get your chapel prayer hands together, and you can repeat after me as we pray. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for Jesus, thank you for Jesus who teaches me, who teaches me about, your forgiveness about your forgiveness and love. And love. Thank you for laughter. Thank you for laughter. Thank you for water. Thank you for water. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ah. There's a lot here. There's a lot here in this story of Jesus and this woman at a well. And it all it revolves around truth. I noticed that in this last week, revolves around the idea of truth, truth in God, and the image of living water, which is an anchor image of our uh, guiding theme for our small groups and worship series here this year, Journey Through Lent, how in the desert there is yet living water. Um, and, and it occurred to me as I got up this morning, I did really well, I, I got to bed a little earlier, I felt great when I got up, and I didn't expect that, and I, I, was, I was ready to go, uh, and then I saw Scott in the doorway, when I got there, I said, oh no. So oftentimes we think of ourselves in the place of the woman, don't we? Because we come from the human side. Here I am, five husbands, you know, shameful of my truth, right? And we, we, we encounter Jesus there. But I wonder too. The need, the need uh, to listen to Jesus and to name that honest longing for a drink. It's a blessing and honor to be a pastor, let alone your pastor. And so I 
think I just need to be today. today. And it takes, it's a, it takes an emotional lot <laughs> to wade into the funeral and the memorial of liturgy. Um, I know you've had a handful recently. Um, some of that is by convenience for families and, and scheduling. Um, and I know that I hear from my colleagues that you know, there are years where you have way more than, than I in this season. And so uh, I, it's not about the volume, but it's about the, the stepping honestly into the place of, uh, of truth. To mourn those that we have lost, to be sad when our sister dies, to uh, to know that there is no prescribed kind of pattern, even though we psychologically know cycles of grief and how it works, that it hits differently for different people, and so it's this complex milieu of of stuff. And yet Jesus invites us to enter into that truth and to sit there and dwell even but if for a moment to hear of living water of something beyond that which would quench our normal everyday thirst that would give us the strength that we need to continue to persevere and be vulnerable Keep showing up in community. There's a great practice, I think, in uh, contemplation, which is the sub theme of today. It invites us into uh, a space, a time of deep consideration and thought to go, to find a practice or a space uh, to go deeper into truth, into meaning, that you only can by stepping out of the flow of the world, by letting go, and by being filled. And so there's a lot here. There's a lot here today, both in our texts and in our life as community. So thank you for your grace, for holding on, for helping me find my place in it all. I don't know how to get on track here. <laughs> uh, and maybe that's not the point. Maybe that's the lesson I'm to learn here today. Uh, and so uh, for me, the center of this all this living water. I learned from the Spark Bible, which is our children's Bible. And, and, and oftentimes I think you can think, okay, well, I need to grow past that. And one of the reasons I came to Cross of Hope is the, uh, um, the presence of the, the school, the, the children, the families, uh, the, the chapel, um, a chance to learn and grow from um, Evelyn and Wilson and Ryan up through Robert Howard. Uh, it, it, it is, it's a, it, a perspective keeping, but it's, it's an enormous uh, honor. And, and, and so, I don't think we always need to, what is it, everything I learned in life, I need to know what I learned in kindergarten or preschool. A preschool teacher right there. So <laughs> but the Spark Bible, I, I, I read in chapel this week, this, this month, was the women, the women, women at the well. And it, it, it says there of living water, love that forgives, and life forever with God. Love that forgives, and life forever with God. It seems too simple, right? It seems like there needs to be more. You have the longest conversation in the Bible. 
that Jesus has with somebody else is right here. You heard it today. Right? And it could have been the shortest had she just said, sure, or no, I guess. You know. I'm sure Jesus probably would have followed up and said, sure, and then done, right? You have, you have all of this to think about what does it mean? What is all this stuff about worship? What is all this stuff about living water? What is living water? A love that forgives and life forever with God. This is what, in not so many words, we proclaim on Friday as we gather to celebrate and give thanks for Adam. And the inspiration of those images of Bart and me the love that they share. Love that forgives and life forever with God. That's what we proclaimed yesterday as we gathered to remember and give thanks for Carol Russell. And the beauty that she created around herself to mirror the joy and presence of God she knew so well as the truth of the foundation of her faith. Love that forgives and life forever with God. This is the gift and the promise that, that, uh, that, that had this woman at a well leave that for which she came, her life needing water, and run back to town to tell everyone to come and see someone who knows the truth about me, who is the way to God, Love that forgives and life forever with God. And so, beloved, as we continue to share this journey, that yes, Ruth never ends. I sat down after sharing uh, uh, the necessary uh, news of our community, and she just whispered to me, boy, it never ends. And it doesn't. That's the truth. And yet there beside the truth is that which also endures. That which Jesus said, living water, I am he. Love that forgives and life forever with God. And so, though uh, I may not have given you uh, three points on which to land and a thread to follow today, uh, I hope that maybe you may find some moment in your week to sit quietly with this story, with the idea of Jesus as living water, love that forgives, and life forever with God. And may it give you what you need to, to be sustained on this journey that we share. For it is an honor. And it is a blessing. Life in God. Amen. Amen.
Pause for your church. Bless partnerships with other Christians and all in your religious dialogue. Guide the daily work of denominational and congregational leaders. Strengthen our combined witness for the sake of the gospel that all experience your life-giving love. We bless you for our week of hosting family promise and commend our neighbors through your grace, through other caring faith communities. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. We pray for the universe. All creation teems with life, from the depths of the earth and the sea to the skies above. Fill us with awe and reverence for the diverse diversity and preservation of life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. Topple the dividing walls that separate us from our neighbors. Form us into your beloved community, where diversity of gender, race, language, ability, and ethnic origin is celebrated and affirmed. We pray for our siblings in Ukraine. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Be present with all who are lonely, and give courage to all who are afraid. Comfort those who live with chronic illness or other sickness. We pray for Teresa, Alex, Arcy, Brianne, Kim, Tim, Claudia, Bob, David, Laura, Dale and Evie, Jan, Lydia, Josh, David, Kathy, Chris, John and Susan, Judy, Wendy, Bill and Jim, Robert and Carolyn, Judy, Glenn, Audie, Will, Karen, Nadine, Bill, Nicole, Eileen, Griselda, Rick, Tony, Janessa, Sherry, and Beverly, as they mourn the loss of their sister Brenda. And all those remain now in silence or alone. Give them your living water, always, merciful God. We pray for cross of hope, especially for Ryan and those preparing for baptism. Nurture their faith and pour your love into their hearts. Inspire our community by their testimony to God's grace in their lives. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks for those lives of all of your saints, especially Alan and Carol and Brenda. Their hope in your sustained lives of faith and service. 
encourage us with the hope they shared in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love that you promised to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share briefly a sign of God's peace.
them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Jesus Christ, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. <laughs>
keep the body of Christ broken for you.